this week. There goes that generator. Yeah, no, this is my worst time for this. What's the problem? An Electra meltdown brings back a familiar face. Ah! <laughs> Plus, ice road trucker Alex Devagorsky gets snowed under. Then you're shoveling shit. And heavy winds push Scott to his limits. Where are we going? Hold this pitch right here. Go. Out of your hats, boy. Buffalo co pilot Scott Blue is facing a long, hard mission. His morning commute is going to be the best part of his day. Pretty unique that I can drive a snowmobile from my house to where I work. Scrape and grind on a couple of streets. You're on a lake. And I can drive right to the plane I fly if I want. Today, Scott will be flying the L-188 Lockheed Electra on one of the most grueling jobs of the entire year. River shuttle for us. I don't like doing these, but it's part of what air freight is all about. Ice buildup on the Mackenzie River has blocked in the Merv Hardy Ferry. Food for Yellowknife and most of the territories travels up the highway on trucks, crossing the river by ferry. Now, the supply chain is severed. 40,000 people across the north are depending on planes to get food on the table. It's totally mother nature that's deciding when she does this, and no one's really all that prepared for it. But this year, general manager Mikey McBrien wants to meet the shuttle head on sending Buffalo's biggest plane. It's a little bit more expensive to take the lecture, but you get it all in. You get it in quick. And the customers, they want their stuff now. Starting four, Second officer Scott will join pilot Sean Barry and Ray Weaver, along with mechanic Adam Smith, for a marathon of short flights and heavy lifting. The electric will happily fly 20 minutes to Hay River and then load up and fly 20 minutes back and unload for four hours. The plane doesn't mind. That's a lot of work for the crew. 30,000 pounds of work on every round trip. The one thing we don't have is time. The only thing we have to do is go. But as the Electra taxis to the runway. And there goes that generator. We don't really want to do this. Go back to the hangar. Those coming back. I don't know what's going on here. That's not a, that's never a good sign. Number four generator is tripped. It's a feeding power to the right spot. It's a pretty bad electrical problem. This electrical snag has crippled the plane's number four engine. Yeah, I know this is the worst time for this kind of stuff to happen. It's fucking stupid. We have 30,000 pounds away in Hay River for this airplane, and as you can see, it's not in Hay River. It's here with an electrical snag. The electrical system in the Electra is a nightmare. And it's not all computerized. It's mechanical switches, and it's extraordinarily complex. Okay, Jim. And tracking down a single electrical fault could take hours or even days. If that doesn't work, I'll have to investigate further. That's time Buffalo and Yellowknife just don't have. Their other Electra needs an overhaul right now. So Mikey goes to plan B. The Electra really helped out. But you know, when you play cards, you don't always get the ace. Sometimes you get the 46, so that's what we got. The C-46, compared to the complex Electra, it's a simple, piston-pounding mechanical workhorse from World War II. 
So how's the betting, man? I'd say this thing will be running his butt off for the next few days. And as a C-46 co-pilot, Scott will be running with him. Scott Blue, he's multi-trained on a bunch of airplanes. He was like the Swiss Scotty knife. So wherever we needed him, we used that ability of his, and we made sure he worked his tail off. The ground crew has to scramble to get the plane heated and ready to fly. In a plane with half the Electra's payload, Scott and C-46 Captain Jeff Schroeder will have to fly twice as many trips. Yeah, I'll be out of here in 10, 15 minutes down here river, pick up some stuff, bring it back, repeat, and likely again tomorrow and the next day and the next day because it's river shuttle. <laughs> is barely underway. Buffalo and Scott are already playing catch up. Well, they want the Electra, but the fucking gremlins on it. We can't, they can't figure them out, man. I have a feeling this thing's gonna be flying all weekend. Gotta see if we can get the airplane fixed. Yeah, it can be a little bit frustrating at times. It's up to Adam to get the Electra running and back on the shuttle. But the maze of wires and relays is overwhelming. And right now, there's no real Electra expert working at Buffalo. But the answer to that problem might just be paying a visit to the hangar. Former Buffalo Electra mechanic, Chuck Adams. How's it going? How you doing? Pretty good, sir. Good, good. Coming back to Buffalo after a year of absence was a bit of a rush, actually. Who wants it? After a long history of frustration with management, Chuck finally stormed out last year. I'm out of here, brother. I quit. I done a lot of things with that man. And what did I get in the end? Shit. Do you miss Chuck? Do you miss a pain in the ass? Hmm? Chuck's been working at a nearby airline. Okay. Does he know where you're coming? No. Well, he's got to be around somewhere, right? Eh? But today, he's poking his head in looking for director of maintenance, Rod McBrien, because he needs his old job back. How are you doing, little brother? Oh, pretty good, so? It's all up to you, I'm going to Yeah, see you later. <laughs> Chuck left here, you know, last uh, fall. He went over to Adelaire, and, uh, you know, Adelaire was going through some tough times. They lost some contracts, and Chuck was really worried that he may be laid off. I heard you got some big work coming up or something? Um, well, there's always a bunch of stuff coming on. If it wasn't going to work this time around, I was packing my family up and everything and leaving the north. It's up to Rod to decide if Chuck gets rehired. Rodney? Oh, uh, pretty good. So? Good to see you. Well, let's come by to see what's happening, you know? Yeah. What do you think about me coming back, brother? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, whatever you want, man. Chuck could help solve the Electra problem, but his temper and his mouth have a way of causing their own problems. Since Chuck left, our drama's gone down and everything's been running smooth and nice. So once Chuck gets back, then him and Joe can go at it and Chuck can run around getting mad at everybody. <laughs> the looks from some, if looks would kill, I'd be dead. People didn't want me to come back even before I came back. We got by without him for a year already. The world doesn't revolve around Chuck. Good seeing you, brother. Oh, yeah. We just got to make sure that uh, we place him right or whatever so he doesn't get frustrated and we don't get frustrated. And... But Chuck and frustration are a package deal. The last flight of the night has just landed at the Yellowknife Airport. Along with Christine Povey, Buffalo's newest rampy. How are you? Oh, so nice to find you. <laughs> Christine's meeting her new landlord and getting familiar with the Yellowknife winter. It's cold in Yellowknife. There's snow here. It wasn't snow when I left Toronto. Yeah, I know it's cold out. Just over a month ago, Christine came here to check out life on the ramp. 
but this time it's for keeps. I've had a little bit of an opportunity to experience Buffalo, but I've always had something to go home to. Now I have nothing to go home to, like I'm here now. And she's left her old life behind to work as a grunt for the chance to fly Buffalo's vintage warbirds. The question now, is this dental hygienist really cut out for life in the north? It's the kind of a place you either love it or you don't. And if you don't like it, then there's no point in staying because it isn't going to change. Yeah. Oh, haven't seen this in a while. It doesn't sound like love right now. Big, it's scary, it's good, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit of everything right now. Um, it's very surreal. Doesn't feel like I'm here um, for good. And the day after tomorrow, she begins her long struggle toward a seat in the cockpit. Guess we should be able to see where he's going, eh? Early the next morning, oh, hey, brother. Chuck Adams is gearing up for his triumphant return to Buffalo Airways. You know what's going to be different? Not the goddamn thing. It's going to be like I never left in about an hour. That's what it's going to be like. You see that round thing with that buffalo on it? That's a great big magnet. You just keep sucking the guy back in. He's been gone a year, but it's almost like he never even left. Yes, I do remember how to do this, that's for sure. And just like the old days, it only takes one little thing Ruby. to set Chuck off. He's been brought in for his Electra expertise, but Buffalo's working on selling two of its 215 water bombers known as ducks. What's the plan? Quack, quack. This morning, they need Chuck to pitch in on an engine overhaul. And for Chuck, that's a problem. Give me some pointers on this, buddy, because I don't even know what a duck's all about. I haven't worked on a duck since I started here, and all of a sudden, my first day back, I'm working on a duck. Side. Chuck's back, but maybe not for long. Management around here. <laughs> He might as well be on Mars, if you want my honest opinion. Between me and you, you know that cat that walks around here? I get more goddamn knowledge out of that cat than I do our total management team. I guess that's why I came back, just for the management entertainment. This company is something to be desired, I'll tell you that. All I want to do is get the out of here. It's day one, and Chuck's picking up right where he left off. Across the lake in Hay River, Scott Blue's getting an early start on the first river shuttle run of the day. Good morning, day two. Okay, it's gonna be a busy airport today. Once again, the C-46 will be a vital lifeline. We're flying food. We are literally feeding the people of Yellowknife. It's basically 20,000 people in Yellowknife and another 20,000 people all over the territory. So 40,000 people's food has to come. OK, we'll get that perishable okay. shit. Here, come with me. Ah! Ah! OK, good. Straight up. Everything about this is a race against the clock. The only thing that we really can't do any faster is the actual flying. The plane only goes so quick. And Scott's become the river shuttle point man. Okay, guys, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get this long fucker off. You sorry? So the 46 is loaded to its maximum capacity. 13,000 pounds. What happens when you stick a chalk in in an unloaded plane and then you load it? It gets wedged in the tire compressors. The plane is literally straining under the weight of the job. And so is Scott. We're going to go back to Yellowknife now. I'll be happy when this day ends. Or at least we're happy. 
I'm not, no, an eighth ton. Shoot me already. By the time the sun's up, Scott's back in Yellowknife. With freight piling up back on the Hay River Ram, Scott wants to make sure his crew doesn't hit any delays. Oh! But gravity has other ideas. This huge pallet of pasta sauce exploded, glass jars six-foot-high pallet of pasta sauce, kablam, on the angled floor of the 46. Huge pile, we're like, ah! We're gonna have to rewrap this. Kids, we're gonna drop it off, we'll go get some more, it's gonna take a while. All their hard work buried by an avalanche of delicately seasoned sauce. Ladies and gentlemen, become pilots. This is what you get to do. How high do you want? No more than that. Four high, Jeff, or three high? Four high, we'll shriek right the heck out of it. Okay, three. Well, we lost one Raku. Contact in Airborne, all two and clear for takeoff, 325. Scott can savor a very minor victory, but he'll face a major challenge before the ferries back in. It's the end of the day, but the big push goes on. Freight's been the top priority. Can you tell them to get ready to go back to Hay River? But Buffalo's also been moving a lot of people. Anyone wanting to cross Great Slave Lake suddenly needs to fly. And that includes one celebrity passenger, Yellowknife resident, and ice road trucker, Alex Debogorski. <laughs> Good to go, you're flying? Yeah. Yep. Alex is en route to British Columbia for a book signing. He planned to drive all the way, but tonight, Buffalo is his only ticket. I've got a car in Hay River, which uh, the airport phoned me on Friday asking me whether the car was abandoned. And they said, don't haul it to the dump, I need it next week. <laughs> After months in the airport parking lot, he has no clue what shape the car is in. But he knows this DC-3 will at least get him that far. Oh, I've flown in this plane many times. Hopefully I have a seat, don't have to sit on the floor. He won't know until the DC-3 touches down whether he'll be able to make his trip or if Hay River is the end of the line. On the Hay River tarmac, the DC-3 passenger sked taxis in with a load of river shuttle refugees, including ice road trucker Alex Debogorski. How was the flight? Good. Seems to be a little milder here. You know, that's the nice, nice thing about Hay River, you get a 10 degree bonus. For a veteran of winter driving, Alex seems painfully unprepared. How long has this thing been here for, Alex? Well, well it's been here since May, but my wife used it in September. Battery's dead now. Well, it snowed quite a bit here. Lucky for him, Buffalo Joe's ready to lend a hand. Yeah, you're a truck driver. You know how to shovel. Then you're shoveling shit. There, a shovel to back. Oh, do you want me to back up? Truck drivers always start the wrong end. You're messing up my hair. You don't have enough hair to mess up. Don't worry about it. We're gonna. Suggest to him maybe it would save more trouble if we just, he just supplied me with a garage to keep the car in. That way he wouldn't have to help me start it every time I come here. Auxiliary, battery. Rescuing an ice road trucker from the ravages of winter, it's all in a day's work for Buffalo Joe. <laughs> On the Yellowknife tarmac, <laughs> hey. Buffalo's newest rampy is having a tough first day. This is the glamorous life that I'm leading right now. It's cold and it's snowy, and 
and keeping the ravens away from the food, so. At least she's trying to keep the ravens away. Hey! You rotten little. Hey! Seriously? Get. Rotten little boost. They pilfered a bag of chips. Hopefully that'll keep them busy for a few minutes. But it's a losing battle. <laughs> and then there they go again. Oh, they're just a pain in the ass. I'm going back on Raven Patrol because they are everything right now. So far, Christine hasn't even taken the time to get real winter clothes and shoes. You gotta dress right. I said you gotta get some good boots, and she said she hasn't had time to unpack them. I just told her, I said, all you have on is jeans. She's like, yeah, normal jeans. I'm like, okay, first off, try the lime jeans. They're on sale right now, they're worth every nickel. The question now, will Christine even bother to upgrade her winter clothes? Because this is not at all what she signed up for. It does feel distant from what I do want to be doing as a pilot. I've given up everything in Toronto. Take the damn chip. I had a job, and I had a home, and I had friends, so. There's definitely a feeling of, oh, what have I done? Now, will the reality of the ramp be too much for Christine? On the other side of the hangar, the Electra is still stuck on the ground, with no clues to the electrical mystery. What's the problem? I don't know, there's some, they're saying the number four generator, but I don't know what the they're doing. Enter Buffalo's resident Electra expert, Chuck Adams. I'm looking there, brother. As soon as he went, push the disconnect button, after a frustrating morning playing with the ducks, Chuck is back on familiar turf. And he makes a quick diagnosis. He's sure that some old wires inside the generator have given out. What's going on here, sweetie? I don't know, man. Now he has to get it out of the engine to see for sure. And I would say the last person that put this on figured that this piece holds the whole airplane together because these bolts are so fucking tight. Hey, Smitty, I think this generator must hold the whole airplane together. Go in there and give somebody shit. No, not even going to bother. What are you going to do, get a top oil? Yeah, I'm going to get a rubber mount. Fun job. I got it. Okay. Let's see how she looks, boys. Hmm. Oh, ceiling in there. Well, I was kind of hoping to find some broken wires or something, but you can see, you know. Aha! Am I good, man? I'll fucking tell you, boys. What do you got going on there, Chucky? Because I'm getting a hard on, man. I haven't had one in months. Get the fuck over here. You see that? Yeah. This one was ready to fall off. Down. Cranky or not, Chuck still got all his old electric powers. Broken 50-year-old wires have crippled the generator. Now, Chuck will work more of his magic getting the plane back online. Let's get it on, and let's get a run out of here so we can go home. But until the engine starts spinning again, the C-46 is still Buffalo's River Shuttle workhorse. along with Scott Blue. Two solid days of back and forth flying and pushing pallets is taking its toll. Well, what's exactly we do here, Beth? Uh, we're gonna get a little closer in and about five miles and start making a left turn. River shuttle's always a lot of work. I was just beat by the end of the second day. And down in Hay River, conditions are turning ugly. Heavy winds are battering the airport. Hay River was minus 20. It wasn't too cold, but man, was it blowing and snowing. Yeah, it was crosswind city. Buffalo 325, wind 250, gusting 15. Oh, the wind is gusting directly across the main runway. And the only other runway has no electronic beacon system. But the cloud cover is so low and so thick there's no other way to land. 
We had to take the runway with the best electronic support, but it also had the worst crosswind. You got the lights on high? That's affirmative. I have the approach lights on too. Did you want them higher? Full pull. It's the runway straight ahead, follow behind. And in these conditions, the 46 is one of the worst planes to be landing. The 46 is notorious for being really tough to handle in a crosswind. It doesn't have a very long fuselage, it's really fat. So the wind really affects the 46. It was at the crosswind limits of the airplane. And on this leg, it's Scott's turn to make the landing. Slightly high, four mile final. In the air over the Hay River Airport, Scott Blue prepares for a landing that will test all of his skill. Buffalo 325, wind 250 at 10, gusting 15. 15 knot or 30 kilometer winds are gusting right across the runway. Got 20 degree bank turn for now. Any crosswind over 15 knots is considered too dangerous to even attempt a landing. I need a bit more jam. Power shot. Visibility was so bad that we had to take the long runway coming in from the south. The runway with the worst possible crosswind. Globalizer's starting to come in now, and we're really high here. Push your forward about 110 there. You just make sure that that lovely old airplane, aka bitch, knows who's boss. But at the end of the day, the wind's the real boss. Scott will have to side slip onto the runway. In a side slip, a pilot lowers one wing into the wind which reduces its force on the plane, but it also causes the plane to turn in that direction. The pilot needs to use the pedals, shifting the rudder to combat that drift. If he doesn't balance the two forces, he can be forced off the runway right before touching down. Push your forward, push your forward, we're still high. Hold, hold this pitch right here. You're fighting the wind, the plane's just an instrument, and you're just trying to play that instrument as best as you can. Just runway straight ahead, to the Push forward. Give your power on, don't touch it yet. The west rudder. You're coming in a little bit like this. You have full deflection and dancing on the pedals. You have to keep it straight and get it down. The west rudder. Okay. Now, first call center, we're number down here. I felt good about that. Got it done. It was heavy duty. After two days as a loadmaster, Scott's happy to be a pilot again. The C-46 is a handful to land in those conditions, but it's a nice challenge at the same time. And Scott's day is about to get a lot better. Name your company. Company is AVO. Good news. Stay back in. Shuttle's over. Quickly as a river shuttle happens, this is as quickly as a river shuttle can end. It's still four hours until sunrise in Yellowknife, but Christine Povey's workday is already beginning. And it's a special day, even if Christine's not feeling it. It does not feel like my birthday at all today. It's uh, about 5.50 in the morning. Um, I had my way, I'd still be asleep. Uh, I would've done something a little bit fancier than Cheerios for breakfast. Far from home and familiar faces, Christine said to find a way to celebrate all on her own. I made the cupcakes. There we go. So, happy birthday. Christine's starting her day in the cargo bay, and she's getting a lot of reminders of the life she left behind. Getting a lot of birthday texts and everything from all my friends, so it's only 9 o'clock there. So. Christine's the first rampy to ever bring cupcakes to the cargo shed. I mean, like marshmallow cream icing at six in the morning to get you going. They look good. It's always sunshiny in the morning. There's more than just her baking skills making Christine unique on the ramp. Turning 30 today, she's almost 10 years older than the average newbie. Cold as it was yesterday, though. Cold as ramping on the ramp. 
Yes, I'm old. I'm fine with it. Technically, I'm 29 for another 12 hours or something like that. She's here because she dreams of flying, but she came to that dream a lot later than the other rampies. Oh, hell, it sucks. I'm not in the same situation. I'm in a different stage of my life than a lot of these guys are. I'm not 20 years old. Um, this isn't something that I can, you know, in four years be like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe I don't like this. If four years down the road I decide that flying's not for me, I kind of have to seriously consider what's next because I'll, I'll be 34 versus, you know, 25, 26. There we go. This is what flight school's all about, kids. Christine's pulled a big U-turn in her life. If she can't make Buffalo work, it's a U-turn to a dead end. Back on the ramp, there's no rest for a weary Scott Blue. This is ridiculous. After the marathon of the river shuttle, his reward? He and the rest of the Electra crew are tackling the worst load Scott's ever seen. This is going to take so long, because all we can do is one piece at a time. Drop it, we'll get another repeat, repeat, repeat because of the angle. There's a reason why modern cargo planes are built with doors at the front and the back. OK, yep, you ready? That's good. A neighboring airline is building a new hangar in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. The entire building's worth of materials has to get there ASAP. It was fugly, man. It was <laughs> not good stuff. And the biggest cargo charter available is Buffalo's Electra. I've loaded some ugly-ass stuff into threes, fours, and lots into the 46s, but the thing about those planes is they don't take 30,000 pounds of stuff. And right now, Scott is the only one at Buffalo certified to ride in the Electra center seat, monitoring the engines. They call him a second officer. He performs the function of a flight engineer. So he won't get to share in the actual flying of the plane. None of this work on the electric contributes to his goal, moving into the captain's seat. If you're asking the, the, the blunt question of whether my second officer time in the electric counts for my grand total flight time, it does not. That's it, maxed out side shift. But he has to put in all this time to get the load on the plane. Okay, that's a good place for that piece of scrap iron. Yeah, block a little higher, that's it. We're five hours into this shit, and we're still not done. It's already been an exhausting few days, and Scott's patience is wearing thin. Can you direct me to where to apply to Air Canada? The next morning, the Electra is loaded up to head north. Groovy, brother. But the crew isn't quite so ready. I was sore all over. I had somebody beat me with a stick. My legs ached, my back ached, my arms and shoulders ached. And we're clear on two. Are you ready? We we're all still sore from the night before, knowing we were going to be even more sore that night. And we're clear to boogie. They're in pain now, but it'll be much worse for Scott. Whoa! Oh, shit. Before the day's over. On the Yellowknife tarmac, Christine Povey is feeling the strain of working the ramp and the pain of 30 below. As much as she's been missing her old life, she's been missing proper winter gear. My toes were very, very cold this morning. I learned my lesson, so that's on the to-do list for the day is to find my real winter boots. Whoa! I was definitely not prepared um, in terms of what I was wearing. I didn't know what to expect. It's definitely a wake-up call. That's just cold. But Christine's seen that her only way to the cockpit is across a long, frozen ramp. Just sort of accepted that, you know, this is probably going to be a part of my life, and came to terms with, this is probably something I'll have to do. And if she's going to stick it out, she has to be prepared. Came all the way from Toronto on the bus. So it was one of the last things I packed. I have no idea what's in it. Hey, if I showed up wearing these, I would get even more guff. So 
I like beef too, though. One day. I'm looking for these! I found my winter boots! I found one. And a lot of high heels, which... Oh. Yes! And my second boot. There we go. Those are my winter boots. I joke I feel like a fireman right now because I think I'm wearing about 10 pounds of, of winter gear. Oh, look at those boots. Christine's decided that she's going to keep following her dream after all. It's cold and long days and tired. I don't think I could do it if I tried. But succeeding here will take a lot more than new footwear. I'm done for the day. Lighting exterior lights, you're done. Secure down the any day I set to On the edge of the Arctic Ocean, Scott and the Electro crew are making final approach to Cambridge Bay. The Arctic chill has turned the airstrip icy and slick. The conditions up there were chilly, and the ramp was slipperier than heck. Be really careful when you get cold. Dealing with this load yesterday was difficult. Today, with the ice, it could be downright dangerous. Remember how tight it was coming in? He's slippy and slidey. Like, we can strap it down like that other thing. OK, guys, just going to move more forward. One, two, three. No. Unloading onto a skating rink is already turning into an exercise in frustration. Ah, that's good. It was just a long, drawn out, very, very involved, annoying process. If any of the main flight crew gets hurt, the Electra can't fly. Is that going to drop? OK, ready? I'm going to put it down. Flip it, roll it. Sorry, I'm losing here. It's OK, Sean. Don't worry about it. Take your time. Don't get hurt. We don't want to be punching holes in the damn airplane. Scott's never had an injury working at Buffalo. But today, that's going to change. And then we got to figure out how to get the curved boomerang sh stuff off. These boomerang pieces are kind of annoying. There's no place to hook a damn strap to. And if it kicks, then this is going out the door God knows where. Scott wants to speed up the job by stacking the curved pieces. Yeah, well, the clean ones are easier to just physically manhandle, though. Because I just think if we load her back and forth, is going to. Yeah, You got to be careful with, with hurrying. You know, one of the uh, axioms of flying is that you don't hurry till you're in the air. Sit. How are your feet? Oh, OK. They're just really awkward. We have to do the slow, boring, take time method. But... And taking his time is getting more and more difficult for Scott as the end comes into sight. It's really hard sometimes where you see that just a little bit of extra effort and things will be, you know, and up and gone. Well, one at a time is safest. We're all getting tired and weak. And when you get tired and cold, you really got to be careful. That's when, you know, something can really be out. You know, damaging can happen. We were getting close to the end, and I'm sure that my fingers were starting to get numb. So you get that anxiousness and the excitedness of finishing the job and going home. We can check something. We were getting ready to go, I think. Where he was going down, walked underneath the wingtip, and we heard a yell. Whoa. Oh, shit. And his feet slipped right off from underneath, and he went, you know, smack on the ground. And he went right down on his head. Yeah, I'll be OK. Uh, I don't think so. It would be an egg, but it's not opened up or anything. It's, it's like a... It's, it's, it's not so on Oh, yeah, it's not, no. It's not bleed. It's not cut. No, it's been oh, I, saw, I saw you. Oh, I know. I felt it. <sighs> my feet went out. And I tried to keep my head up as much as I could, but my ass hit, and then my back hit, and then boom. So I just... According to the boys in the back, it's not cut, but I'm sure I have a nice little goose egg back there. And it hurts, but I don't have any stars or anything. So. 
Yeah, just getting my bearings for a second here. So. Scott's saying he's okay, but six foot seven is a long way to fall. Hmm? We're working with what he's telling us about how and what he feels. A lot of times guys will downplay their damage, but you gotta be careful with that. I'm okay. The crew needs to rely on Scott's judgment in the cockpit. His observations can be critical in this situation. If we pull them, we're stuck. We're there for how long, we don't know. I just wish I hadn't smoked my in the head. Buffalo's electric crew is stranded in Cambridge Bay, an outpost on remote Victoria Island, 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The crew has finished their brutal offload. Are we done, right? We're done. What's up? We just have to, uh, well, as soon as he gets that strap done, okay? And then we're going to taxi over to the fueling house. But they have no idea if they'll be able to head home, because second officer Scott Blue is reeling from a blow to the head. No, no, it was my ass and then my shoulders. I tried to keep it up, but you're right, because it was a whip. It was like a whip effect, so. I felt dopey. I was just sort of, I was out of it. I've been concussed before. A fall like that, you know, you, yeah, you get up and you're okay. Or you could have had a concussion and, you know, that's not okay. If his captain suspects a concussion, Scott can't fly, and neither can the plane. Don't want to have him there if he's, uh, you know, he's not up to the job. Are we going to have a crew? <laughs> no, he's long. I'm okay. And by the time the plane is fueled up, Ray makes his call. Rick is going to start number oh, five. And I guess I'll run back at this door when he's hopping in, and then I'll get out of here. He was recuperating fairly rapidly. I think he still had a bit of a headache, but you know he didn't feel woozy anymore. Scott sounds enough like his old self that Ray decides to let him take the middle seat. You still want to watch him to make sure that he's you not know, going to keel over on you or something silly there. Zero, zero. How did it get so late? I know. Bullshit, man. We were, uh, I think, all glad to go home. I'm sure uh, Sean and Ray were kind of watching me a little bit more than usual. Take me home. Sure. Get around here long enough. Shitty load, <laughs> shitty delays, shitty unload, hit the head. Nothing but shit. Trim. Selected and trim. It's been a hellish week for Scott, and all the grief of this mission has taken him not one mile closer to his goals. Definitely the worst. But I work at Buffalo, I'm sure it'll be more. So we're clear line, was he? 